Ninja Zone coach here at Rising Stars Academy. Been coaching Ninja for about five years. I've got about 12 years of experience in Taekwondo. So I think that leaves me in a good spot to teach this lesson. So a lot of times I hear from newer coaches, newer Ninja Zone coaches, uh, they don't really understand kicks well enough to teach them. And I feel like this is a problem for a lot of new coaches because the kicks that we do uh, are used in an entirely different sport. They make up all of Taekwondo. So not only are we teaching everything that we teach in Ninja, we're also teaching everything that Taekwondo teaches. Well, not everything, but a good chunk of it. So what I'm trying to do here is help Ninja Zone coaches teach kicks the proper way. So in a way, I'm a coach coaching coaches. So we're gonna start with white level, move our way up to yellow and green. And there's a couple in blue we'll do too. The kicks you learn in white and yellow make up all of the other kicks that you will ever do in Taekwondo or higher levels of Ninja. So these first three are very important and the two we learn in yellow are also just as important. So with the first kick, this is always the first one I teach because I think it's the easiest. It's the front kick. Uh, with just about any kick, there's about a hundred different ways to do it and a hundred different ways to teach it. So I'm gonna break it down in the simplest way, how I teach the younger kids, kids who are just starting out. And then after that, I'll go over the uh, smaller little details that, are, that I think are important for teachers to understand if they're gonna be teaching these kicks. So, we always have our hands up. And you can teach this with the back leg or the front leg. What I usually do is I have them stand straight up and I tell them lift up your foot and kick straight out. And if I'm holding a target, if I'm holding a target, what's gonna happen when they do this kick hitting with the bottom of their foot, they're gonna push me back. Now you don't need one of these, you can use that wall over there. The idea is just pushing somebody away, basically. So that's pretty simple, right? So how does it get more complicated? Well, like I said, you can do it with your front or back leg. The front leg for speed, back leg for power. Now, we're not usually just kicking with the bottom of our foot. For little ones, I teach this because it's more simple. But once they get onto the higher levels, you probably want to start teaching the specifics they are kicking with the ball of their foot. So what they want to do is point their foot and pull their toes back. So the point that makes contact is the ball of their foot. Now you can have two different goals with this. You can have damage. That would be called a snap kick in Taekwondo. Or you can have uh, a push. This is the one I prefer to teach because it makes more sense for them when they're little. In this one, you're not going to be kicking and pulling back fast. You're gonna be kicking and pushing out, pushing into them. All right, moving on to the side kick. So first, here's how I teach it to little kids. I'll have them up on the wall or I'll use my kick shield and I'll hold it. And it's the same idea. They wanna push me back. If they're hitting on the side, 
they're probably doing a hook kick or a roundhouse kick. If it's going this way or that way, it's the wrong kick. They need to be pushing into it. So they can use their front leg or they can use their back leg. If they use their back leg, it's called a turning side kick because you turn and you kick out. The front leg is easier to teach. You tell them, stand sideways, lift up your closer foot, and kick out of the target. Their toes should be sideways because it's a side kick. As long as their toes are sideways, it counts as a side kick. A lot of times I'll see their toes are up, their body's sideways, but their toes are up. Still a front kick. Their toes need to be sideways. So then if you want to get more detailed, watch what my feet are doing. I'm kicking out this way. Watch my standing foot. It's called pivoting. I took my standing foot and I pivoted so that it's facing back. This makes it easier to get their toes sideways. If, if you're having one of those kids that has a problem with, with doing their side kicks with their toes up. So just have them turn this foot back and then try to kick out. Their toes are gonna to be more sideways that time. And then this is something that even a lot of Taekwondo schools don't teach. It's called blading your foot. This is so the bones in your ankles align better. So same thing, I'm gonna take my back foot and turn it back. And what I'm gonna do with my foot is I'm basically, I'm basically making my foot face down towards the floor so that the edge of my foot is what makes contact. Like you're doing a weird karate chop. All right, let's talk about back kick. Uh, some kids will have trouble understanding the difference between a side kick and a back kick because they are very similar movements. This side kick, that's back kick. The difference is very subtle. So the simplest way to teach it, tell them your toes are pointed down, you're facing back. You're looking over your shoulder so you can see where you're kicking. And then you're kicking straight back, the bottom of your foot. So your toes are facing down. This is another good one to do on a solid surface like the wall. Again, if I'm holding the pad, they're pushing me back. It's the same thing for all three of these, pushing back. So then, more detailed way, there's two ways you can make contact. There's three ways you can make contact. You can do this one's my favorite. The ball of the foot, where you do it like a front kick, you stick the ball of your foot out. You can do a flat foot. This is how most kids are gonna do it. Or you can do the heel, where you're gonna pull your foot back as much as you can. And stick your heel out. All right, so now we're on yellow level. There's two kicks in yellow level. These are probably the most important they're gonna learn. They're also the most difficult to teach. It's the roundhouse kick and the hook kick. I'll start with the one I think it's a little bit easier, the hook kick. I like to use a kick paddle for this one. Slap somebody in the face with the bottom of your foot. If they're, a lot of times what you'll get is you'll be holding it and they'll lift their foot up and they'll try to, try to slap it, but it ends up doing this, kicking right into you. Uh, so be careful of that. If they're bigger, that might actually hurt you. Um, if they're having that problem, I like to explain it as the rainbow pattern. It goes from here, makes a rainbow all the way to here. Lift up, start over here, and then make the rainbow pattern. Should sound like that. Another way you can teach this one, have them stand on the side of the wall, take their closer foot, not their further away one, because they'll like to do this. Take their closer foot, lift it up, and then hit the wall with the bottom of their foot as hard as they can. It's usually a pretty good way for them to get the hang of the basics of it. All right, so then what do you do after that? You teach them a spinning hook kick. Uh, when, you start, when they start learning spinning, they get very confused. Don't rush into this. Let them take their time. If they're not understanding it, come back to it later. 
I like to move sideways with it. You can move forwards with it too. I just think sideways is a little bit easier to teach. So this is gonna depend on the way they cartwheel. If they cartwheel with their left foot forward, that's the direction they're gonna go. They cartwheel with their right foot forward, they're gonna go this way. I'm gonna cartwheel with my left foot. So I'm gonna take my right foot, I'm gonna step over. So now I'm backwards to the target. Then I'm gonna look back, and this is where you say, now do your hook kick. Then you have them practice it just like that. Do it step by step. Step over, look back, do your hook kick. Once they get the idea, they can start doing it faster. So then onto the roundhouse kick. This I think is definitely the most difficult kick to teach. So you can do it with front leg or back leg. I think it's easier when you're starting out to teach it with the front leg. Stand sideways, just like the side kick. You're gonna lift it up. And I like to say, you're just playing the hook kick in reverse. So if the hook kick goes this way, the roundhouse kick is gonna go that way. Make sure they know they need to hit with the top of their foot. Top of the foot. So I'll hold the paddle out like this. Tell them stand sideways. Lift your foot up and take the top of your foot and slap it like that. The biggest problem I see with this is it turns into what's called a crescent kick. We don't do crescent kicks in Ninja. We do them in Taekwondo. But don't let them be doing crescent kicks thinking they're roundhouse kicks. So this would be a crescent kick. Where you're hitting with the inside of your foot or the outside. So how do you fix this problem? You can use the wall again. Do the opposite. We're gonna face towards the wall. Take your closest foot. Smack the wall with the top of their foot. They usually get the idea pretty quick. But then when you go back to the paddle, you're holding the paddle, and they're still hitting it with the side of their foot. So what do you do? Go back to what we talked about with the back kick. Pivot your foot. My feet are facing this way. It gets hard to turn my hip. And I end up doing a crescent kick. Tell them, turn that standing foot back. That way. Just like for the back kick. Then they lift it up, and all of a sudden, they're hitting with the top of their foot. Because of the way our hips are aligned. So if they're not getting it, and they're doing this, turn the hips. So then, what if you're teaching with the back foot? This is why I don't teach the back foot first. But at this point, now we can teach it because we taught it the other way already. So, this one, they have to pivot their foot mid-action. They can't already have it pivoted. Because you can't really turn your foot while it's in front. So this foot is facing this way. Hard for you to see it. This foot is facing this way. I'm gonna take this foot and I'm gonna start turning for my roundhouse kick. This foot is gonna pivot while I'm doing the kick. If you're teaching your roundhouse kick with the back leg and you're not teaching the pivot, this is what happens. Don't do that. I think this video is getting kind of long already, so I'm gonna have the green and blue level kicks in another video. Uh, those are a whole different level of difficult, but they will not learn how to do those kicks if they do not have a solid understanding of the first five kicks, especially the yellow kicks. Feel free to contact me if you have any more questions about these. I left out a few things about the roundhouse kick and the hook kick can actually kick with different parts of your feet for those two but the problem with teaching those methods to kids is sometimes sometimes you can develop bad habits you want to make sure you build up those good habits and the proper way we do it in the ninja zone before you start teaching some more complicated ways to do the five basic kicks so if you want me to go over those just let me know but for now i think we're just going to call it with these